everyone, it's Caitlin from The Walks of Life. Today we're talking about lo mein. Now, lo mein is an old standby of Chinese American cooking, and we've cooked a lot of lo mein in our day. By now, we've covered just about all the lo mains. Beef, pork, chicken, mmm. Vegetable, shrimp, happy family from our cookbook. Basically a combination lo mein. Even turkey lo mein for those Thanksgiving leftovers. It's a simple dish to cook at home, but getting great results does rely on knowing a few simple tips and tricks, and it's one of those dishes that gets better every time you make it. Each time, you're a little bit more familiar with what to look out for. That said, over the years, we've received many comments from people running into issues we'd never really encountered. People would describe sticky or raw noodles, or a version that was too dry. Or they would attempt to double or triple the recipe and find that their dish turned out bland. We realized that, in fact, what might seem like a simple recipe is only because we're always making small and automatic adjustments to avoid these types of problems. So in this video, we'll explore our top 10 tips for cooking great lo mein at home. These are all the tips and tricks that we've gathered over the years, particularly from Bill, who's been cooking lo mein at home and in restaurant kitchens for a few decades now. Tip number one, properly prepare the lo mein noodles, whether you're using cooked or uncooked. You can get cooked noodles, which we use often. All you gotta do is take them out and maybe give them a, a quick rinse in hot water to uh, warm them up. But these noodles have to be cooked. And this is clearly a raw noodle, right? It's, it's, it has a little coating. Uh, wait till we get a boil. Put them in there. Zhuzh them apart here. My trusty little spider here. I'm gonna put these in here. There you go. So now we're gonna take these right away over to the sink. Cold water and just stop the cooking process here. Everything is cooled off. Look at that. That's a beautiful noodle. That's the way it should look. I'm just gonna let it sit there and drain. So they're al dente. In the middle, they're a little bit chewy and that's the way you want them because you're gonna cook these again. I would say they're extra al dente. I'm just gonna approximate it here. And we toss it in oil. Put this in a Ziploc bag or put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Go to the wok, throw it in there and start cooking. Tip number two, know what order to add ingredients to the wok. So I've got my mise en place here and basically it's, it's a little bit of work. You gotta shred the Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage is essential because it's such a sweet vegetable, it has a lot of water content in it makes the lo mein really tasty. Same thing goes with the mung bean sprouts and scallions. And notice how I've grouped them, right? So this is gonna go in at some point. And these vegetables are the ones that cook very quickly. The mung bean sprouts don't have to cook very long. You don't wanna cook these, uh, snow peas very long. And the scallions go in also. You don't wanna have them. You want a nice, fresh taste of scallion. Now on the other hand, these, uh, the water chestnuts, the carrots, and in this case, I have raw fresh mushrooms and I have bamboo shoots. These can be afforded to cook a little bit longer, right? And, um, and the fresh garlic. And in this case, I have just uh, some cooked shrimp and, and chicken. Some chicken we have left over for, uh, from another dish. Uh, this happens to be cooked and some cooked shrimp as well. These are the most typical vegetables that, we, that, that you'd use in a lo mein. Keep in mind that things move fast at the wok. Make sure you have all of your vegetables washed, drained, and chopped, and your lo mein sauce mixed. pre stir fry your protein until it's 80% done and then set it aside. You'll cook it again when you add it back to the wok. Then you'll want to add the vegetables that take a bit longer to cook. Your carrots, your cabbage, mushrooms, sliced water chestnuts, and bamboo shoots. Then add the quicker cooking vegetables. Onions, bell peppers, snow peas, or snap peas. Finally, there are some vegetables that you should really add quite literally at the last minute mung bean sprouts, and scallions. You want them just wilted, and as Bill says. And now, this is ready to plate, because you don't want to overcook the bean sprouts. Tip number three, velvet and pre-stir fry raw proteins. There's lo mein that you use with cooked meats, and then there's lo mein that you use, to, like today, for this chicken lo mein, raw meats. So the cooked meats, what are the examples? You have the uh, roast chicken left over, and you want to shred the chicken, you throw it in. You have like a, uh, a pork roast and you want to chop that up, or you have like a, a piece of roast beef, chop that up, cha siu. That's sort of different. You don't have to sear it. You don't want to overcook the, that, uh, those cooked meats because they're already cooked, so you want to kind of add them at a different time, right? Now for uncooked meats, you definitely want to velvet your meat, and we do have separate posts for how to velvet your chicken, how to velvet your pork, how to prepare your shrimp, how to prepare your beef. Velveting is super important. Now one note about that is that a lot of our uh, recipes already have, uh, tell you how to velvet your meat, 
Uh, and you can follow those certainly because they work. But if you want more to deep dive into velveting your raw meat, check out each one of those posts. Definitely worth a read. Velveting is one of the best things you can do for leveling up your Chinese food game at home. We have guides to velveting and marinating beef, pork, chicken, and shrimp for stir fry on the blog. A good rule of thumb is about eight ounces of protein per batch of lo mein. If you're using cooked meats, there's no need to reheat them before you add them to the wok. Just add them at the same stage you would add the pre-cooked meat back to the wok. Tip number four, perfect the art of the fridge clean out lo mein. Now, one note that I wanted to make was that a lot of people, we get comments on all of our lo mein recipes that say, hey, I just added some peppers, or I added some snow peas, or I did this, or I did that because I had it, and I didn't have this, and didn't, perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Just watch your quantities and how much you put in because uh, there's a lot going on in the wok. Believe it or not, if you add a few vegetables here and there, or maybe you, you chopped, uh, this is like approximately four cups of cabbage, you know, some people add a little bit more or a little bit less, and it's gonna affect the seasoning. So you're gonna season the uh, lo mein, mix it all together, and right before you plate it, you're gonna taste it. You could add a little bit more sesame oil if you like it more sesame. If it's too salty, then you're gonna adjust that. Or you can, a quick way to fix something that you oversalted is you add more vegetables, and then you're good. Add a little bit more soy sauce. Like it darker, add more dark soy sauce. If you don't have dark soy sauce, then you can substitute. Put a little bit of, of molasses or dark brown sugar uh, instead of the regular sugar. Uh, there's a way, we have a post uh, on ingredients on how to substitute for dark soy sauce. A lot of people like their lo mein darker. Case in point, Sarah and Caitlin, they're always saying like, it's not dark enough. Add a little bit more dark soy sauce. That's perfectly fine. At the wok, you can fix that. You say, yeah, it looks kind of bland. It looks kind of like dark, uh, light that is. So you zhuzh it with a little bit more dark soy sauce, mix it up, and dark soy sauce is pretty powerful. You add like a teaspoon, and it, and it darkens everything up. That's the big point. You customize it according to your liking. And again, watch those ingredients. You add more ingredients, you gotta add more seasoning. Tip number five, know your dark and light soy sauces. Over the past year, simple lo mein has created a bit of a dust up in our family. My mom and dad's approach, i.e. Bill and Judy to you, is traditional. A lighter colored, more delicately flavored lo mein. As for me and Sarah, we prefer an extra hit of dark soy sauce for more body and flavor. Now, we've all quietly held these opinions for the last 20 some odd years, until this past year when an innocent attempt to make a be all end all lo mein cooking video turned into a grand debate about how to flavor lo mein. Mmm, really good. I think it is bland. I'm gonna put it out there. You're bland. <laughs> In some of the clips from this video, my dad is seen making a classic gather everything up from the fridge lo mein and Sarah's beloved chicken lo mein. The latter has extra dark soy sauce. The former demonstrates my parents' preferred method, which is a lighter hand on the dark soy sauce. I remember that. I remember that. And your mother and I thought, hey, this is great. It's fine. And Sarah and you thought, said like, no, it's too dark. It's too, I mean, it's too light. It's too bland. So. For me, it's a personal preference. So all we had to do to correct that was add another teaspoon of dark soy sauce. And something about that for you and Sarah makes it more savory or makes it more uh, attractive or appetizing where it's uh, slightly darker. It's really a matter of taste and preference. Just remember that a little bit of dark soy sauce really goes a long way. Just a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon can instantly darken a whole wok full of noodles. See how dark the soy sauce is? Sarah likes it dark. Tastes good. What do you think about the soy sauce content? The controversial dark soy sauce factor. I think it does add some richness to it. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Tip number six, no standing sauce. Unlike beef chow fun that comes in a dry version and a wet version, lo mein should pretty much always be dry. In other words, there should be no standing sauce in the wok. That said, here are Bill's thoughts on the matter. Sometimes yep. on the internet, I see these lo mains and they're all coated in a lot of sauce. What do you think about the sauce debate on the lo mein? It's a really good question. So uh, lo mein, in general, is 
is dry. There's, there's no gravy, there's no sauce in it. But when I say dry, I don't mean that it should be dry. The lo mein should be moist. That's why we have a lot of vegetables in it. And when you have it, it should kind of slide around in your mouth, if you will, and, uh, and be pleasurable to eat, not, not starchy, dry, or sticky, or anything there like that. There shouldn't be any standing sauce, though. There shouldn't be any standing sauce. Now, that said, I'll remember a story when I was in high school, and we were cooking um, lo mein in the restaurant, and a buddy of mine and his parents came in and uh, had the chicken lo mein, and they enjoyed it thoroughly, right? And uh, I said, hey, I, I can teach you how to make this, actually. And he took me up on the offer, and I, and I wrote it down and gave it to uh, his mom, uh, to him, who he gave it to his mom, and his mom cooked it. And one day I was over there, I forget what we were doing, we were riding snowmobiles or doing some mischief, mischievous thing or something like that. And, and, uh, and his mom said, you know, we made lo mein the other night and, you know, we like it kind of soupy. And I totally get that, right? Because when it's soupy, it kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's smoother and, it's, and it, uh, maybe you can taste more of the sauce. When I say soupy, I don't mean goopy. I mean a little bit watery. Um, uh, that's how she described it to me. So I get it. So that's why there's different styles like that. But traditionally, a lo mein is a, dry, a little bit of a dry dish where you want some wok hay, and then at the end, you can give it a splash of water. We're probably gonna do that today. We're using these cooked noodles that are dried in the package. We're not gonna do anything special to them. We're just gonna add them right into the packet. And sometimes they get a little bit dry, especially if you have a really hot wok. And maybe uh, you, your vegetables are drier because uh, hum there's low humidity or, or, or what have you, for whatever reason. So at the end, you just zhuzh it with a little bit of uh, stock, chicken stock, or just water, and just to loosen things up a little bit. It's almost like uh, when you put a little bit of pasta water uh, and you're cooking pasta, it loosens it up and it's so much better. That's the sa same applies for lo mein. So there's the answer for that. Uh, you know, soupy or not soupy, or how much moisture you want. Tip number seven, avoid overcrowding the wok. In case you've noticed, we have a 20 inch wok at home and a big wok burner. Needless to say, most of you watching don't have a 20 inch wok at home, which means that you may want to cook your lo mein in smaller batches to ensure that the wok doesn't get overcrowded. A hot wok is key to great lo mein and also makes it easier to stir fry all the ingredients. When you overcrowd your wok, it makes it more difficult for your wok to come up to temperature evenly and also mix everything together. That's why we recommend a 14 inch wok as standard, which is still pretty big. You might overcrowd the wok. Not everybody has a nice big wok that we have on the stove with that big flame. Uh, and you know, some have 14 inch woks, some have 12 inch woks. So this, quite frankly, this recipe would be kind of the limit of a 12 inch wok. It might even be too much. So you might want to think about cutting it in half and making two batches. It'll cook faster. It'll probably be better because there's just less, less fussing around, less uh, a scooping of the lo mein. And you stand to get more wok hay, exactly. Tip number eight, do I even need a wok? That's a really great question because we get a lot of those questions too. It's like, I don't have a wok. Or do I need a wok to cook lo mein? And the straight answer is no, you don't. So you have one of these, big nonstick saute pan, or one of these, just a regular generic saute pan, you absolutely can cook lo mein. These, for a nonstick, you don't have to worry so much about your, uh, your raw meats searing them. We also have a post on how to cook your meats without sticking or how to cook food without sticking. That's Judy's post. You just got to heat it right, add the right amount of oil, and it won't stick either. So what say you is the difference for this? Practically none. You heat it up nicely, you sear your meat, take it out, you do everything the same. The only difference I would say is that, uh, you know, for these, for these uh, sort of round, round uh, bottomed uh, pans that, uh, that you have the right spatula for it, right? And you definitely want to use a wooden spoon for, or, or something that won't scratch your nonstick surface. And you pro this pan you can use, it has high uh, um, edges around it, so it 
tends to be a little bit less messy. But keep in mind that food gets caught in this corner, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to really watch that. But 100%, make your lo mein even if you don't have a wok. I think the nonstick pan is better though because it's less danger of the noodle sticking to the wok or to the pan. That's true. Nonstick is always the, seems to be yeah. always seems to be a little bit more sensible. Just don't overheat your nonstick pan. For safety, for health reasons, nonstick pans are generally rated at around 400 degrees. You don't really want to go much higher. Tip number nine, prevent your noodles from breaking with the scoop and shake technique. The scoop and shake is Bill's technique for great tossed noodles every time. Scoop the noodles up and then shake them loose with your wok spatula to help distribute ingredients without breaking your noodles. Now I see this key scooping motion, this scoop and shake. Scoop and shake. And what the shaking does is it helps you break up, break up these noodles. It mimics the movement of a professional wok chef tossing the wok at the stove, but allows you to do it at home without any fancy techniques. And this is essential, people, for a low main. Scoop, scoop, and mix. Scoop from the other side and mix. You see this raw, raw stuff? Scoop. Tip number 10, prevent noodles from turning sticky by using a metal wok spatula, preheating your wok, and using extra hot water to loosen the noodles. This may be one of the most common complaints we get from folks trying to cook lo mein at home. There are a few tricks for preventing your noodles from sticking. The first is making sure that you prepared those lo mein noodles properly, the way that we described at the top of the video. Tossing your noodles in oil gives you a head start to make sure that your noodles don't stick to the wok. The second important trick is making sure that you preheat your pan or your wok properly. Heating your pan or wok until it's just smoking before you add the oil helps get rid of any surface moisture that may be trapped in the grooves of the metal. This helps naturally create a more nonstick surface for your cooking. The other trick is using a metal wok spatula. The thin edge of a metal wok spatula makes it easy to scrape up any bits that may start to stick to the wok and create a mess. And last but not least, make sure to have a little bit of hot water or hot chicken stock on hand to loosen up the noodles and moisten them if they start to look dry. Dry noodles tend to start to burn and stick to a wok, so a little bit of water can go a long way. When Bill recently made lo mein, he demonstrated some of these tips. Now, you notice that there's a little bit of sticking happening here, right? Now, this is where you have a metal spatula and you want to actually make sure you scrape when, you, when you're tossing. That was a key thing. Scrape when you're tossing and then you have your high flame and it'll remain non-stick. If you don't scrape it, you might get a sticky mess at the bottom by the end of the dish. Now, this looks a little dry, but we're going to add these we're going to add these bean sprouts because there's a lot of moisture in that first. And we're going to add the scallions. This is almost done now. And now this still looks dry to me. And this is at the point where people say, hey, this looks a little sticky. It's kind of sticky. So you know what? I am actually, believe it or not, going to add about a almost a quarter cup of water and don't be afraid to pour it right onto the noodle because it, it loosens up the noodle just like pasta water when you're adding spaghetti almost done and I gotta say it still looks dry to me so I'm gonna pour a little bit more water and you can use your sauce bowl Okay, just like that. You see there's a little bit of moisture at the bottom of the wok. It's not, a, it's not any standing sauce, but this is the way it should look. All right, I'm turning off the flame. There's the heat of the wok. And look at this, it's a particularly dry day here. I would say for, for this lo mein, because I didn't rinse the noodles or do anything like that, and the noodles are dry out of the package, I would say I added almost a half a cup of water to this, or stock. So it is very key to do that. And you know what, I'm gonna even zhuzh it a little bit more. And now, this is ready to plate. 
And those are our 10 tips for making great lo mein at home. Oh, Keep yeah. on keeping on with your lo mein journeys, folks. It's a dish that gets better and better every time you make it. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe.